All right, so let's get started here. <clears throat> uh, welcome to the um, <clears throat> Colorado Department of Regulatory Agencies Division of Real Estate uh, HOA Forum. Um, today we're going to be talking about the recent legislative changes in the year 2022. Um, this is actually going to be part two. Uh, last month we talked about House Bill 1137. And today we're going to talk about the remaining bills that we didn't really get a chance to uh, address last time. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nick Altman. Uh, I'm the HOA Information and Resource Center uh, new information officer. Um, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, helping the folks of Colorado hopefully learn and uh, navigate the sometimes extremely complex and complicated HOA landscape. Um, joining me today is my colleague, uh, Amanda, Amanda Lopez. Uh, she's the center's uh, HOA information support specialist. Um, hi, Amanda, do you wanna say hi real quick? Yes, good morning or afternoon, I apologize. Good afternoon and thank you all for joining. Um, I look forward to working with you, uh, Nick, with this. So uh, again, thank you all for joining. With us as well, we have David Donnelly, who is the Education, Communication, and Policy Manager, which uh, oversees one of his many, many roles, oversees the very fun HOA office. So have at it, David. <laughs> fun indeed. Thank you, Amanda. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to be here with uh, Amanda and Nick today for this. Uh, I think we had a, a really uh, an excellent forum last month. And I think that uh, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, having a conversation with you all today about the other four re remaining HOA bills. Um, so with that, um, uh, welcome. And thank you very much for joining us. And I'll pass it back to Nick. Thanks. All right, thanks, Amanda, and thank you, David. All right, so just a quick disclaimer. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure a lot of you have already, you know, you're familiar with what we do here, but um, <clears throat> the information provided during this presentation is for educational purposes only and is not meant to provide, nor should it be construed as legal advice. Any legal questions that you might have should be directed to a qualified attorney licensed in the state of Colorado. <clears throat> All right, again, um, <clears throat> is this forum about House Bill 1137? No, it's not. <laughs> uh, for those, again, we have that already posted on our website. If you want to check out the forum from last month, um, we talked about House Bill 1137 in great detail. Um, if you had any questions or follow-up questions that you feel weren't answered, uh, definitely feel free to send us an email, um, which should be posted in chat uh, at the moment. Um, <clears throat> also, there's just a quick snippet there on the slide um, on where to go on our website specifically to uh, access those videos <clears throat> and a couple links there for your, your reference as well. <clears throat> All right, uh, so what do we do here? I'm sure most of you are aware, we, we provide education and information to the public uh, regarding their rights and responsibilities under the Colorado Common Interest Ownership Act. That is the state law here in Colorado that governs what you can and cannot do in your, <coughs> excuse me, your homeowners association. <clears throat> that is pronounced, or excuse me, abbreviated CIOA, C-C-I-O-A. Um, and in this presentation, that is uh, what we'll be referring to when we say CIOA. <clears throat> uh, importantly, what we don't do here, uh, we cannot mediate or arbitrate. Uh, we do not act as an advocate for any specific party. Um, and uh, we're not a regulatory program. Who is this presentation for? This presentation is for board members, community association managers, and homeowners. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay. Uh, before we get started to, to kind of nail into the nitty gritty, um, we want to know, we're, we're always interested here at the Information uh, HOA Center, um, what you, the public, would like us to talk about uh, in future HOA forums. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind, um, or, you know, as we're kind of going through this presentation, uh, just, just put in chat, you know, what you think or what you hope we would talk about. Um, we already have a lot of uh, forums on our website, but if you feel we haven't uh, addressed a particular topic or want us to go more in depth with something, uh, definitely just let us know. You know, it could be uh, uh, special assessments or amenities, uh, <clears throat> any any number of things that uh, you know might come to your might come to your mind. So definitely let us know in chat, and I'll just give it about ten seconds here before I uh, advance slides. All right, so um, the Colorado General Assembly, as I'm sure most of you know, uh, the 74th General Assembly opened on January 9th, 2023, which was just a couple weeks ago. Uh, we posted a link there. Uh, we encourage you to uh, stay informed uh, about what's going on down there. Um, and the bills that we're gonna talk about in this presentation were part of the 73rd General Assembly, which convened on January 12th, 2022, and was adjourned on May 11th, 2022. Um, all right, so the bills we're gonna talk about today, um, <clears throat> there were five bills overall in 2022, which affected association life. Those bills were, House Bill 22-1040, Homeowners Reasonable Access to Common Areas, House Bill 1137, Homeowners Association Board Accountability and Transparency, which we talked about last time, <clears throat> House Bill 1139, Homeowners Associations Cannot Regulate Use of Public Rights of Way, uh, House Bill 1314, Towing Carrier non-consensual toes. And finally, Senate Bill 059, Homeowners Association Voting Proxy Limitations. <clears throat> All right, uh, House Bill 1040 uh, was passed by the uh, excuse me, legislature, signed by the governor on April 12th, 2022, and became effective uh, August 10th, 2022. Prime sponsors for, for this bill were uh, Representative Rich, uh, Hooten, and Senators Story and Holbert. So <clears throat> the prime purpose of uh, House Bill 1040 is to preserve and protect unit owners' ability to use and enjoy the common elements in their community. Basically, <clears throat> an HOA shall not unreasonably restrict or prohibit unit owners access to or enjoyment of any common elements, uh, including during the maintenance, repair, <clears throat> or replacement of that common element. Uh, <clears throat> the association may restrict or prohibit access to a common element uh, only to the extent uh, that A, it protects the safety of any individuals, uh, including individuals performing the maintenance, or B, preserve the structural integrity or condition of a repair, replacement, or modification. So if your community has a swimming pool or a gym and say, I don't know, the treadmill breaks down, your HOA uh, has a duty to provide notice that A, this treadmill is broken, uh, B, why is this treadmill broken, C, how long is it going to take for us to repair this treadmill? Uh, more specifically, um, notice is required if the amenity will be closed or down for more than 72 hours. So 
if the pool's only broken or closed for you know a day or two, notice is not required. Um, but after seven hours, notice is required. Uh, and that notice can be either electronic or written. And it shall include a simple, well, like I already said, a simple reason and uh, an estimation, a reasonable estimation about how long it's going to be closed for. Um, and the notice has to be visible and clearly legible. Uh, importantly, at any physical access point to that to that common element or that amenity. So if you have a pool, the notice has to be posted on <clears throat> both the, you know both gates or or any gate that is uh, entering into the pool or a door or uh, any other access physical access point. And it has to remain uh, it has to remain there for the duration of the the repairs. All right, I'm gonna turn this one over to David. He's gonna talk about uh, House Bill 1139. David? Excellent, thanks so much, Nick. Um, so the next bill we wanted to talk about uh, this uh, uh, afternoon, it is afternoon, <laughs> I was thinking it was morning still, uh, is uh, you, you, some of you will have be, will be familiar with it because it, uh, of its term, uh, 1139. Uh, what this bill does is pertains to public rights of way. So after after the legislature passed this bill, um, it was it was uh, handed over to the governor and the governor signed it on May 6th of 2022. And just like 1040 before uh, uh, this and the two bills that we'll talk about after this one, this also became effective on August 10th. Uh, the prime sponsors for this bill, uh, and the reason we wanted to give you the names of the of the prime sponsors for these bills is because um, uh, our legislators are they're real people. Um, uh, they uh, they represent you um, in each of your respective areas. Um, uh, uh, you are their constituents, and so getting familiar with these names, and and certainly you're going to see on, on on these prime sponsor slides that we have here, you're going to see a, a couple of repeats. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, whether they're representatives or senators, you're going to see some of those names appear on more than one of these bills. And those are, uh, those, uh, if, if you have particular interests and are interested in wanting to expand or contract for that matter, uh, if you want, if you just want to see some new laws regarding legislation, um, uh, regarding HOAs, then uh, um, uh, having some of these names in, uh, in uh, in your back pocket, it's going to be a helpful thing for you to do. Um, but uh, the, but uh, again, with 1139, um, Rep. Geithner and Rep. Hooten, uh, and then Senator Bridges and Senator Heise uh, were the prime sponsors for uh, HB 221139. Generally speaking, what this bill is about is that um, uh, it amended a specific section of Kiowa. Um, as you can see there, 106.5 is the subsection. We have a citation for you here. It, what it does is clarifies that associations, that means your board, that means your, your community association managers, your CAMs, shall not enforce the restrictions uh, nor can they require that public rights of, way, rights of way be used in a certain manner any longer. Um, so before 1139 passed, some of your associations, you might have been familiar with um, a, a rule and regulation in your community that said, thou shalt not park overnight your RV or your trailer with your ATV on it or your snow machine uh, on it. You may not leave that parked on the street overnight uh, in your community. A rule like that, for instance, there's, I mean, there, there, every community is different, you, as you all know, um, but uh, that, that's, let, let's, let's just start with an operation like that. What this bill does now is says that rather than associations having the authority to issue those types of rules, now local governance or resolutions or, uh, or uh, rules or franchises, license or charter provisions are what control. So that means that if you have a public right of way, then your association no longer has the authority to enforce use restrictions in uh, on that public right of way. Next slide there, Dick. So 
one of the most important questions that a board has to take on now in, in order to answer is how do I know if I have public rights of way in my community or not. Um, uh, a board can determine that uh, um, by, by, by a, a couple different things. The, a question that I usually like to in indicate to people is, well, do you, do you have to maintain the roads? What happens if you got a pothole? Uh, does the association have to fix that pothole or does uh, does the city or the county come in and fix it? Who plows the road? We just got a pretty good snowstorm here in Denver um, uh, in uh, uh, the last few days. It was uh, bad enough that uh, the government uh, shut 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 its doors uh, and a lot, most of the schools in the, in the Denver area all shut down. Um, uh, who would who came in and, and plowed your your driveway? Uh, not your driveways, excuse me, I misspoke there. Who came in and uh, plowed your roads after a snowstorm such as that. Um, I, um, I, another question that you could ask is, is this a gated community? Can, uh, can anyone, some stranger like myself, can I come up, drive down your road or do I need a get, a, a, the gate code in order to get into your community? These are some questions that you can ask in order to help determine whether or not the, the roads in your community are quote unquote public rights of way. Um, it, very importantly, though, what this does not talk about is that it does. Uh, uh, this bill does not affect parking lots. It does not affect people that are allowed to park on the yards, or maybe maybe they have an RV that parks. On, they park are allowed to park behind a fence on the side of their house. Doesn't affect their driveways either. So these are exceptions to the rules or limitations. So, um, so even if I've got a public right of way in my community, that, but I, 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 the, the association can still enforce rules like I'm not allowed to park my semi-trailer in, uh, uh, in, in my driveway. Um, uh, that might be the case, or um, I, I might not be able to park uh, or ha have a, a, a car that's on uh, um, uh, uh, that, that, that's on uh, on bricks or something like that that's uh, inoperable um, might be another option there. So th these rules do not specifically apply to parking lots, to parking on yards, or parking in driveways. Next one there. So um, related to uh, 1139 is the next bill that I'd like to talk to you guys about, which is HB 22-1314. This is a, uh, a, a bill that was also passed by the legislature and signed by the governor on June 7th of 2022. And uh, like I said before, effective August 10th. The, uh, the prime sponsors for 1314 were Representative Nikita Ricks, Representative Hooten, Senator Gonzalez, and Senator Sonnenberg. Um, uh, this is a, uh, I, 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 I know that when we presented on 1137 last month, I, I used the terms long and complex or something to that extent to talk about that bill too. Well, it, guess what? It's not the only bill that was uh, long and complex. Uh, HB 221314 is a very long and a very complex bill, and it was a significant overhaul of, to of, of the requirements for towing carriers ac all across the state, statewide here. Um, towing carriers is just a, a, a term of art that we're using to discuss towing companies, um, uh, um, uh, whether, whether that's the, the, the tow truck that comes and, and, and uh, uh, pulls you off uh, if, if, you, if, you're, if you get stuck in the snow on I-70, but also the towing carriers that come and, and uh, uh, um, uh, address, address illegally parked uh, vehicles in, uh, uh, on, on private property as well. So the Public Utilities Commission, we refer to that as the PUC, is a division of the Department of Regulatory Agencies, DORA. Now, a lot of people, when they call Nick and I and uh, Amanda, they say, oh, I'm calling DORA. That's somewhat true. We are also here at the Division of Real Estate. We are a subsection or a division of DORA. And so, um, but DORA addresses 
a very wide array of different organizations and different professions um, uh, and uh, and industries across uh, uh, the, st the state. So the Public Utilities Commission is sort of, you could think of it as a sister agency to the division of real estate, us. And, but that's who is responsible primarily for the implementation and the enforcement of this law. Um, and I, uh, before you guys go and pull out um, uh, HB 221314, I'll, 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 I'll forewarn you that the vast majority of the provisions in this law don't apply to homeowners associations. They apply to the licensure of towing carriers and uh, and uh, and and also a, a myriad of other issues. Um, there are only a handful of the sections of 1314 that apply to associations, but those are important associations. And just as I've been uh, look, watch, watching the uh, uh, chat field go go here go by, I've seen a couple questions that pertain to to it. So uh, so let's get into uh, that with the next slide here, Nick. Um, uh, the the PUC has developed a. Uh, uh, just, th this is just an infographic uh, 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 that they put together um, uh, when they when, when they knew that this bill was going to be taking effect because because it's a complicated bill they want they wanted to uh, work hand in hand uh, with the public in order to effectively communicate that some of these changes so so uh, I mean uh, and we'll hit some of these these points again in a moment but uh, but uh, some of the takeaways off this infographic from the uh, from the public utility Commissioner that carriers cannot tow for an, uh, an expired registration or expired plates any longer um, unless it is at the direction of law enforcement now. Prior to this bill passing, um, uh, 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 a homeowner's a board association could say expired plates, that's a violation of our rules, you can get towed. That cannot happen now because the, of this new law. Carriers also must give 24 hours notice vehicle to, uh, to uh, on a vehicle um, before it can be towed. That uh, what the statute specifically says is that you have to put a notice on their windshield, um, I, um, saying that if you don't move, uh, you know, that you're parked illegally, that you're not, you're, you're here uh, without authorization, and uh, you need to be, uh, and and you have 24 hours to move your vehicle. Uh, this is your this is your 24 hour notice. Um, uh, um, an, another another reference here is that carriers uh, must release a vehicle at no charge and upon request if a vehicle is still on private property. This is called a drop fee. Um, uh, so if uh, if I if I am uh, parked illegally, uh, un unknowingly to me and myself, whatever what the case whatever the case might be, um, uh, and I hear a tow truck making its beeping noise out, out my, my back window, I, ru I run out there and uh, and and they they've got my two front wheels up. Uh, 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 just like the, this infographic, um, but they are—they have not moved my car outside of that. I'm still on the property. Uh, they are not allowed to charge a drop fee, and they must drop just let go of the car. Well, not, I mean, gently, um, <laughs> but um, but they they have to release the car back to you. Um, uh, now, as soon as they are off the property. Um, uh, I, I mean, if, if you stop them 20 feet down the street uh, uh, or a block down the street, that, this situation does not apply because um, they are off the private property at that point. Um, uh, um, an a, a really important takeaway, whether you live in an association or not, um, just like the last rule, is that um, uh, motor vehicle carrier, towing carriers now have to release uh, a motor vehicle from their uh, impound lots uh, upon payment of either 15% of the overall fees or a maximum of $60. So now that doesn't preclude you from if, if from owing the towing carrier additional monies potentially. I, I, I mean, tow, tow, different towing companies charge different amounts, um, but they are they are required to release the vehicle for a that that that, that sixty dollars or uh, or or fifteen percent if if the if the amount is is ultimately is less than that. So keeping that in mind, uh, that's an uh, that's an important thing for all human beings out there to know. Again, it does not forgive you from if your total towing fees are two hundred and fifty dollars. That doesn't mean that they don't get to come after you for the remainder of that, but they does mean 
mean that they have to release that. Now, uh, there are proposed forms on the Public Utilities Commission uh, website that uh, that uh, would be a, 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 an agreement, essentially. It's an acknowledgement that when you're paying the $60, you're, you're also going to sign a piece of paper that says, I acknowledge that I uh, owe the rest. Um, uh, um, but uh, but uh, so there it, 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 that, that's an important thing for you all to be aware of. And then, uh, uh, and then finally, uh, carriers must release contents of a vehicle uh, with 30 days notice. So, um, uh, and again, that's, that's, that's general. That's not necessarily something that necessarily works to uh, uh, specifically in the HOA uh, arena. However, good, good for all, all citizens of Colorado to know about some of these bills. Next slide there, Nick. So um, and now we, we hit on some of these already um, uh, in, on, on, the, on the previous from the infographic, but a few more that I wanted to address, and I also wanted you to have them all in one place, nice here uh, um, as as well, which is. Um, uh, um, to, the the towing carrier is now required to photograph the condition of the motor vehicle um, uh, and and what the reason for the tow is prior to hookup. What that means is that if uh, if I'm parked in a fire lane, um, that's grounds for to be towed. Um, but they have to take. Uh, I, I mean, everyone has a has a camera in their pocket, or many people have a camera in their pocket now with their cell phones. They snap a couple photos, um, and 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 uh, and that and. And then a photograph showing evidence of of what the purpose or what the reason for the tow was. Maybe they're parked right in front of a no parking sign. Maybe they're parked in front of the dumpsters. Maybe they're in a fire lane, etc. Um, there's also signage requirements on private property, and this does a, 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 a directly apply to your you board members. Um, we have heard. I have to say allegations because uh, um, I, I, I haven't seen them myself, but I, uh, where people have said, my car got towed, I called the number on, that, that's on this sign right here, and they say we, they don't have a contract with this property. That's a problem for your home, your board. Um, board members, make sure that you have correct and accurate signage so that you your unit owners or the affected people by of, of these toes because they're not always your own your, your owners that are, that are getting towed whomever it is they need to be able to reach out to the proper company there are all sorts of different companies that do this and so um uh, the uh, as far as what the required signage is it needs to be an accurate name um it needs to be prominently located and it needs to have a telephone number for the towing company on it so but what what i've been hearing uh, over over these last few months primarily has been that people do, are calling a company whose sign is on uh, uh, on their the property where the, t the car was towed and they say no we don't have your car no one called us no no one no one asked us to tow from you we don't we don't have a contract with your property so so we don't have your vehicle that means that someone else towed the car and uh, and I, I've, I've certainly heard some some stories about people chasing and calling and needing to hunt down their uh, their board members or their cam in order to figure this out and uh, uh, to figure out actually who did tow their car um, so those are problems that can come up uh, um, and we, you want to make sure as a board member that you have accurate up-to-date information on that on those signs, so that an affected uh, um, uh, vehicle owner can uh, know, know where their car has gone. Um, uh, so, I, 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 one more thing I'd like to hit on, on with this slide in particular is because um, we talked about the drop fees um, uh, already. Is this? Uh, I would like to come back to this twenty-four hour notice issue. Um, there are limited exceptions to that 24-hour notice. Um, uh, um, uh, 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 an example here is if someone is parked in a marked fire zone, um, uh, that would be, or, or, or something to that extent, a health and safety issue, a fire hazard. Um, uh, a, or, uh, if someone is parked in front of the dumpsters on trash day, um, those are circumstances where um, uh, a uh, that th that you that would fall into these limited exceptions where the 24-hour notice is not ultimately required but um uh and and the question uh to 
in those scenarios is uh, does the does the tow truck still need to remove the vehicle from the property or is there a, a safe place where they could place the vehicle elsewhere on the property where it's still protected and things of that sort that's something for boards and tow companies to work hand in glove with each other on in order to make sure that you're arranging a scenario there um, uh, there's nothing that precludes a board from saying I want you to take this pro th this vehicle off the property uh, um, after that notice or what have you but uh, um, keep that in mind there are there are less extreme scenarios that uh, that uh, um, boards could take in a lot of these situations um, uh, uh, let's go to the next slide there Nick. <laughs> So um, uh, just a few more pieces of information for you all on, on the PUC primarily. Um, uh, if you are interested in looking at the towing legislation language, not only do we have it on our website, but, uh, but the PUC also does have uh, access to the, the, the final language of the towing legislation, as well as um, the applicable towing rules. So uh, we don't need to go into a full uh, legislative uh, and rule versus rules versus statutes uh, uh, discussion here, but but the rules are um, are. Are, are really the nitty gritty details that, that are prepared and drafted and proposed by the uh, actual agency, in this case, the PUC. And so uh, so at, if, if you we're very interested in in really getting into the details here, um, uh, accessing for CCR 2723-6500, you'd be able to ob obtain additional information. Now, uh, again, I, um, uh, you prob you're probably not going to find uh, a, a lot of good meat and, uh, good meat and bones there uh, for the HOA world there. Um, uh, again, that has more to do with the licensure process um, uh, that, uh, that the PUC overseas. But, uh, but at the same time, I wanted you all to know that th that's there. Um, uh, uh, what, what your, where your time would be probably be better spent would be to review the one page outline that the PUC prepared regarding the changes to this bill, uh, or, or change, the changes that resulted from this bill. Forgive me, I misspoke there. Um, uh, th those changes are, are what's important. So um, uh, uh, because a lot of you have been familiar, you've been, uh, maybe some of you have been serving on your boards for years, if not uh, longer, um, and you say, well, we've been doing it this way for a long time. That's not, that, that's not an excuse. That's not an explanation any longer. Uh, when laws change, uh, you, you, you need to adapt to them. And, uh, and that's certainly that's what you're trying to do by, by, wanting, by, by attending today and wanting to learn more about these bills as well. So, and then of course, there's the PUC's uh, main website. Uh, they do have a call line if you have specific questions about, uh, 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 about uh, the, whether it's uh, the towing bill or some of the other things that the, the PUC oversees, but I, um, uh, but uh, their telephone number can be located on their website as well as uh, most importantly, uh, if you feel that you've been a victim of, uh, of a towing carrier that has done something wrong, not perhaps perhaps not given you the proper notice, um, uh, refused to, to to drop your vehicle uh, when you're still on the premises, etc. Those types of scenarios, um, uh, the PUC does have a complaint process by which they can conduct an investigation and uh, and issue uh, enforcements and fines um, uh, should they they uh, uh, have a, make a finding that uh, that a towing carrier has acted improperly there. So. Uh, so that their complaint process is is quite robust and uh, and uh, is 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 something that's good for you all to know that is it, that that is out there uh, should should you find yourself in the unfortunate situation of of having been towed. With that, I'm going to hand it back to Nick, and I'm going to uh, and while Nick's uh, talking a little bit here, well, uh, I'll, I'm going to take a look at um, uh, some of these. But I, um, uh, just very the, the last question that just popped up is who's responsible for giving the 24-hour notice? That's an excellent question. Uh, traditionally, in in, in 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 all actuality the party that is responsible for doing that is the towing carrier. However, 
uh, um, uh, in, a, in a lot of situations, um, I, uh, a towing company would say, well, I, I can't come out and tow them until 24 hours notice has been given. Uh, um, I have to charge you the, the, the board, I have to charge you to come out to do that notice. So, if, but if you're willing to put the notice on the, win, on the window on our behalf, that, uh, that could get that clock ticking, so to speak. So I think that that's one way that a lot of communities have been doing that um, uh, is to, is to uh, um, uh, ask the board to assist with that process. And, uh, um, uh, and, then, and then they can come out after that, the 24 hour notice has, has passed. So, all right, so now, now back to Nick Altman. All right. Uh, thanks, David. So uh, Senate Bill 059, uh, Homeowners Association Voting Proxy Limitations, uh, passed by the legislature March 21st, 2022, and uh, became effective August 10th, 2022. <clears throat> uh, Senators Holbert, uh, Representative Hooten, and Ransom were the prime sponsors for this bill. So in a nutshell, uh, this basically, uh, I'm sure most of you know what a proxy is already, but uh, in case you don't, um, it's a written instrument that appoints another person, uh, usually a person, to, to appear and vote on your behalf. Uh, uh, we actually had a webinar uh, that we talked specifically about voting procedures and proxies, so you're more than welcome to, uh, to watch that. Uh, but basically, this bill <clears throat> clarifies that a proxy uh, terminates 11 months after it's after the date that's written on the proxy, uh, unless the date indicates earlier. So that means uh, <clears throat> if I give my neighbor Sam a proxy today, dated January uh, 20th, 2023, that proxy will expire in 11 months from today, unless uh, it says earlier. Uh, so it cannot go on for 12 months or 13 months. Uh, and that, that is the brunt of uh, Senate Bill 059. David, I'll let you take this one. All right, uh, Nick's making me take this one because I insisted on making a reference to Schoolhouse Rocks. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, I was adamant on it. As some, some of you, um, I might be dating myself here, but uh, as a child of the uh, 70s and the 80s, um, uh, um, some of you might be familiar with uh, the image here, uh, which was uh, uh, something that uh, the ABC, the American Broadcast Corporation, uh, did as an educational program. Uh, uh, but what, what oh, the, the purpose in me bringing it up, of course, is is not to uh, advertise for Schoolhouse Rocks, something that they don't make any longer, nor have they for 35, 40 years. But um, but rather that w this 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 presentation is not to uh, here, we're not here to discuss how a bill becomes a law. Um, but uh, um, but but rather, I, w I did want to point out to you that there are numerous resources, both available uh, in, with respect to the, the Colorado legislature, but also nationally, and I mean uh, on the federal level as well as other states and states in general, um, uh, about how a bill becomes a law. I know that there are several people uh, on this uh, call that are very interested in the legislative process, and uh, and uh, and even those that uh, that I'm, I'm sure that have. Uh, uh, testified um, uh, during uh, the, the bill process um, uh, while, while a, a bill is working its way through the legislature uh, and uh, on its way to uh, the governor's desk. So, um, but, uh, but for anyone out there that uh, would like a primer uh, um, on, on, on how a bill becomes a law, um, uh, uh, you might want to just take a look at the link here um, uh, that, uh, that references uh, um, uh, uh, something from I, I believe 1981, but nevertheless, the process is pretty pretty well the same uh, even to this day, and uh, it puts it uh, puts it puts it all together in a pr pretty nice little package for you um, uh, in just uh, just over three minutes. So uh, it's a it's a three minutes that, I, I, in my opinion, is very well spent. Well, thanks, David. Um, <clears throat> So uh, just for everyone's information, again, I just want to thank you all for, for joining us on this Friday afternoon. Uh, but if you, had, uh, if you weren't already aware, uh, the HOA Center, we prepare legislative summaries 
uh, that are designed to kind of just give a quick summary of, of these bills, um, because I know they can be very <clears throat> complicated or, or complex to understand. Uh, sometimes the language <clears throat> doesn't in, imply what, what, what it means or, or, you know, that there could be a lot of uh, loopholes. Uh, so we provide summaries and they are available on our website, uh, the Division of Real Estate's website. There's the link for that. <clears throat> uh, uh, if you just scroll down, it should be under um, legislation summaries. So uh, kind of at the end of these forums, uh, David and I like to uh, include some pro tips uh, just for, you know, board members, uh, home, uh, homeowners alike. Uh, you know, the first thing, I've only been here for a month or, you know, six weeks. Uh, the first thing I could advise is just, just communicate with each other. You know, uh, if your community has a, is, is changing a rule or a regulation, give notice to your homeowners, you know, let them know what's going on in your community. Uh, <clears throat> you know, 1040 uh, does require notice to be delivered and posted, but no one in, in the state is going to punish you for communicating too much with your homeowners. So, you know, the more, the better, like, honestly. Uh, and then board members, you know, uh, figure out if you do, if your community has a public right of way, uh, figure out who who is in charge of, of those roads. Is it the local government? Is it your county? Uh, is it the municipality? Uh, try and figure that out. <clears throat> uh, do some research. Uh, homeowners, if, if your community has public rights of way, also, you know, contact the city to report violations, not the board, uh, as uh, the board does not have authority over these violations. Um, board members, is, is the signage in your community clear? Uh, <clears throat> do you have a sign that's been behind a bush that hasn't been trimmed for 15 years? You know, can, can your homeowners see the signage? <laughs> Uh, are you in a fire lane? Uh, you know, uh, do, do you already have a contracted towing carrier? Uh, things like this, you know, and get it right. Try and get it right the first time so that, you know, if someone has to be towed after proper notice, uh, they can retrieve their vehicle in a timely fashion. Because obviously that's a huge deal. You know, it's people's livelihoods. <clears throat> uh, and then finally, homeowners, you bought into the community. Uh, you are responsible for following the rules and regulations you know, not just for parking, but for everything. When you bought your house, you signed a document, you agreed <clears throat> to the rules and regulations. If you don't know the rules or if something's unclear, contact the board, you know, call them, ask them questions. That's what they're there for. So you can understand them. <clears throat> I don't know if I can stress that enough, but. <clears throat> All right, with that being said, again, here's our website. Uh, here's the email inbox that we have uh, that you can send your questions to. Uh, in case you can't see that, that says Dora underscore D-R-E. That stands for Division of Real Estate underscore H-O-A inquiries at state.co.us. All right, so at this point, uh, we're, we're going to open it up to some questions uh, that were posed in the chat. Uh, Amanda, do um, uh, you got any, got any questions, questions for us? There are a ton of questions and great questions, of course. Um, not sure where you guys wanted to start from. If you want to start from when they first came in or if you want to start from the most recent ones that we just, that uh, probably are referring to the last slide or the last few slides that we went over on the PowerPoint. So kind of um, up to you on how you want to do that as far as where you want to start from. Um, yeah, uh, why, don't, why don't we start with, you know, kind of kind of going in uh, start the beginning of the, the PowerPoint mm -hmm. uh, by order of bills, if, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah, no, 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 definitely. No, there's definitely a lot of good questions. You guys had amazing questions. So thank you. Um, Let's see, I apologize. Let me get to some of these good ones that we had. Um, there were a few on the, let's see, I apologize. There's 
the short term rentals and then well not short I apologize those are the suggestions but so on the okay so there's this one we have it's a spe regarding special districts can they relate a resolution and enforce on the public right of way even if they do not own the road or public right of way I'm, so, could, I, I'm not seeing that question, Amanda. Could you ask? Yeah, could you re from repeat Beth. it one more time, real quick? Yeah. So this one's from Beth. If you have a special district, example metro district, can they create a resolution and enforce on the public right of way, even if they don't own or even if they do not own the road or the public right of way? Um, so it, the, the the question might be a little bit more challenging uh, with respect to special districts or metro districts because they are a governmental entity, um, and so they, their ability to enforce is very different. Um, I, I, I in in my review of the the chat here, uh, special districts have come up quite a bit, which is very interesting. Um, uh, um, but uh, while there are lots of similarities between associations or common interest communities and uh and, and metro districts they are also um uh, there are several differences and most notably that they are a governmental entity and therefore their ability to enforce uh uh on a public right of way is is very different so um uh, and i i believe that they do have the the authority to uh to enforce uh, uh their rules and regulations on uh on on uh, uh on roadways that are within their district not not there's clearly not anything that is outside of their district um, uh, but that is to distinguish from a homeowners association that has public rights of way that come through the association um, uh, they uh, we're, we're, and, and again to, to reiterate the, a homeowners association or a POA or a condo association what have you um, uh, the, uh, the the blanket term is common interest community they're all basically the same from there um, they do not have the ability to enforce their rights to their, excuse me, their rules and regulations on that public right of way. Thank you for answering that one. Perfect. Now we have one regarding the House Bill of the 1137. So if an HOA filed for a foreclosure on a delinquent homeowner prior to the August state bill, that, the, sorry, prior to the August state that the bill became effective and the subsequent sheriff's sale of the delinquent homeowner's home occurred after August, did the new rule still apply? So basically, does it do anything with the retro or anything prior to that? That's a that's an excellent question. Um, uh, that uh, uh, ha to my knowledge has not been tested yet in Colorado. Um, uh, 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 even though we're we're, we're not uh, here to talk about eleven thirty seven, I'll make a quick reference to it just because of this question, because uh, it is a good question. Uh, but the uh, um, uh, there there are provisions in eleven thirty seven that allow uh, if 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 a uh, a, a community goes through a foreclosure improperly um, that uh, that the affected homeowner does have a cause of action against that uh, that board uh, with damages as, uh, amounting as much as twenty five thousand um, uh, dollars for for that. So when I say something's not been tested in the courts, um, uh, um, it, it me simply means that a that that scenario has not taken place. And then uh, that uh, the, the aggrieved party uh, ha has appealed that in order to try to get an order from a, uh, a superior court, a non-trial court, about uh, the interpretations there. Um, uh, our recommendation has been for homeowners associations to uh, reinitiate that process to, uh, um, uh, for those of you that are familiar with 1137, to, uh, to uh, um, issue the proper notice um, and by mailing it in the proper way, posting it on the uh, property the proper way, et cetera, et cetera, to start over, so to speak, um, uh, but uh, but uh, but uh, because uh, because there were there there certainly were probably at least I don't know numbers, but there were there were cases that were in the courts at that point already um, when August tenth came around. Um, uh, uh, there, there there's a, a a distinct possibility that the boards have not taken that kind of recommendation to heart um, and just simply proceeded forward. So it's something that a court is going to have to decide on whether or not they needed to bring that back or uh, um, and reinitiate the the the, the process 
or not, or if they could continue to go on as unaffected. So unfortunately, I wished I could give you that answer, uh, but that's something that a court's gonna have to make a decision on. Thank you, David. Hey, Amanda, I'll cut in here. I'll just, uh, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> Jennifer posed a question um, that seemed to get some support. Uh, and let's see, uh, Jennifer says on 13, 14, uh, is there a way to address repeat offenders who illegally park and then move within the 24 hours, then repeat offend? Um, I, there, it, it, in certain circumstances, there might be. Um, uh, the 1314 does not say that a homeowner's association does not have the right to issue uh, rules and regulations about parking um, uh, uh, um, that, uh, that, that uh, might trigger fees or fines or penalties. Um, uh, now, there's a lot of moving parts to that, uh, but um, uh, but, it, uh, there, there, uh, but cer certainly uh, continuing to address those issues um, uh, with, with that, that homeowner or, or with that, that offending party, let's just say it that way, because again, we don't know if it's a homeowner or not. Um, uh, but uh, but it, it, it certainly is a challenge that is posed by, uh, that, that, that may be created by this bill, um, which is I illegally park there for 12 hours a day, um, but, I, and it's, but, I, but I, I historically I move my car every day. So, um, so I, I, I get out of there before, before, before the 24 hours has lapsed, certainly is a problem uh, uh, in, so, in, in some circumstances, I'm sure. We can at least imagine a world where, where there's an offending party that behaves that behaves in that way. Um, uh, um, uh, that, that specific question might be one that you might want to reach out to the Public Utilities Commission on and see if they have guidance. Um, I know that the Public Utilities Commission is in the process of, uh, of, of uh, preparing some rules on, on uh, the interpretation of 1314. And, uh, but, and certainly, as Nick pointed out earlier, we're also in the, uh, we're now in the midst of our legislative session. It's possible that we could see uh, um, uh, some amendments to the bill uh, 1314 that could hone that or change that a little bit. I don't know of that, but it's possible. Um, uh, so, so something for us to keep our fingers uh, to the pulse uh, with the legislature on and see what, what comes down the pike in that respect. Uh, David, um, do these bills, I know there are some chat uh, comments here, do these bills apply to pre-1992 uh, communities uh, and it's a pretty illegally nuanced question because it, there's a lot that goes into play there, uh, like the size of your community, uh, the amount of assessments. Um, but uh, do do, uh, do all these do all of these bills apply to all communities or or just certain ones? Good, excellent question. Yes, um, uh, uh, there. Uh, uh, thirteen fourteen does. Thirteen fourteen applies to all communities. Um, uh, the uh, um, some some of the other uh, the other aspects to uh, the to ten forty and uh, and and eleven thirty nine, uh, as well as Senate Bill fifty nine. Uh, uh, um, uh, do uh, do. It depends on the circumstances there, but uh, uh, but gen but generally speaking, uh, um, uh, uh, it, for 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 most communities, I think it's safe to say yes uh, uh, that they're that they that, that they will likely apply in most in most cases. Um, uh, I, uh, 1040 does apply to all communities uh, uh, as well, and uh, and I think as uh, John, I see that John uh, also put in a, a response here too that says that uh, uh, 1139 does, but 1137 does not because it, it depends on which section of uh, CRS changed was changed by the bill, and that's quite quite the case. Um, in order to make a determination on uh, which sections of Kiowa apply to your community, if you are a pre-Kiowa community. It, uh, we do have a detailed uh, um, uh, outline uh, on our website, uh, and, and one, also one that we'd be happy to email to anyone that uh, is interested um, uh, um, for to conduct that analysis to determine, help determine, okay, does this section of Kiowa, do, do I have to uh, follow it or not? Um, uh, sort of point by point, um, because uh, uh, aspects of, of, of Kiowa uh, were 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 very challenging, but in, in in any circumstance, you should always review your governing documents as well to ensure that uh, um, that you're you, that you're 
that your board is complying with uh, the, uh, the rules and regulations that you are set forth in your governing documents as well. So uh, there's a lot, a lot of moving parts to, to these. And so uh, we always, because we've been talking about legislation today, we haven't necessarily re referenced your governing documents very much, but that's something you want to keep in mind uh, because it always plays a vital role in the process as well. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Scott has a good question. He has a question about the proxies. Uh, can a proxy be granted to someone who's not a member of the HOA? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, David. Uh, the non Colorado Nonprofit Corporation Act uh, has no such restrictions. Uh, it could be anyone. It could be a friend, a family member. Uh, it, it, there's not even an age requirement. Uh, the person doesn't have to be 18. Uh, David, am I, am I right in that assessment? <clears throat> Correct. Um, uh, the, 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 there, there's also a, a question that came up when we presented on proxies a few, two or three months ago as well. Was it was a great one, uh, which was can I can 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 I issue a proxy to a company? Um, uh, can I or, or, or to the board generally? Um, uh, not a specific person on the board, but the board. Um, uh, and those are two two very different scenarios. Um, uh, um, uh, there there is an allowance in 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 the proxy rules that allow for to uh, grant a proxy to a proxy company, which is something that they, uh, if if any of you have, uh, have have investments in, in a brokerage account of any sort, um, you probably get an annual meeting notice every once in a while from your brokerage saying, hey, um, uh, you're a shareholder and you, you, uh, you, you can appoint a proxy to appoint to show up at, a, at, at your annual meeting on, on your behalf, or you're, you can go and vote yourself along with uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of other people that own an interest in this business, uh, in Pepsi-Cola or what have you, whatever big company uh, comes to mind for you. Um, uh, so there are companies that hold those proxies, but um, but a, a board generally just saying, I grant a proxy to the board is, I, it, there, there certainly is an argument to be made that it, that probably would not be valid because uh, because the idea behind the proxy is that with, with exception for that proxy uh, co holding company, um, the idea is that the proxies are granted to individuals, to a person. Um, uh, and so, of course, that person has to have competency. So um, so the only thing I take issue with, Nick, uh, on your, uh, with you is that uh, was the age. Even though it doesn't say they have to be over 18, um, uh, there, there, there are legal arguments that that a that a minor doesn't have uh, uh have competency because they're not of the age of majority yet um uh but so but yes uh, a non-owning best friend your lawyer your trusted confidant or your neighbor or your the president in your community those are all viable parties that could hold a proxy on your behalf and uh and vote for you uh, at a at a at a uh at a meeting as well as, well as uh, important to point out that proxies also go to uh, obtaining quorum for that meeting. So I walk, I walk in the door as myself, I count as one. I walk in the door with five proxies, I count as six, um, uh, five plus the one. So that helps us, helps the association get quorum so that they can actually, in, in fact, carry out business, that they can do their job at a unit owner meeting. They can have an election. Um, uh, that's one of the most effective ways. One of the things that Nick and I tell, uh, say to people very regularly is the, uh, um, uh, the collection of proxies, generating uh, interest in the community, trying to get people to attend a, a, a meeting. Um, uh, and if they can't, would they be willing to grant, give you a proxy uh, um, so that you you can actually get in there and and affect things democrat through the democratic process? That's such an important uh, aspect, uh, especially because we do hear a lot about communities that just have lackluster interest um, out there. Um, uh, uh, but but uh, but those community members such as yourselves that are listening to this call right now are the interested parties. You can go knock on doors. You can generate that interest. You can tell them what's important, why you believe things are important. And, uh, uh, but, but of course, we all know that everyone's busy. Not everyone has the time to attend the meeting at the one time that it's scheduled for. Um, and so that, that's a situation where a proxy is a really helpful tool to, uh, to utilize. Awesome. Thanks, David. Uh, Amanda, <clears throat> any other uh, questions that uh, you identified for us? 
Um, I've been looking through a few of these and I know we had some. We did have a few of them on the, on the parking still. Um, we did have one asking about, um, let me find it really quick because I just passed it. Um, being able to, I guess, with the handicap, if someone's parked in a handicap pretty much um, is in an HOA, what type of violations are there in an HOA when somebody's parked in an ADA parking? Like I, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I, I definitely understand the question. Thanks there. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if uh, if um, being parked in in a handicap spot is one of those emergency situations or exigent circumstances, um, uh, to use a fancy uh, term, uh, in order to trigger why you would not need to uh, provide that tw that 24 hours notice. Um, uh, but. Uh, I, I'd like to, Nick and I, to have an opportunity to take a look at the language in the bill and see if there is any reference to that, because those exceptions are something that is, are really, they, they are limited exceptions to the 24-hour notice rule. I don't recall there being any language uh, um, to that extent that would suggest that uh, simply being parked in an, in an ADA spot would be um, uh, um, one of those in exigent circumstances, but it's possible. So um, I'd like to take a look at that um, and see if we can follow up uh, um, uh, uh, w w with you about that, because that, that, it's an excellent question, and I, I wish uh, I wished we were armed with the answer to it, but, uh, um, but the the... the it's in the details of the bill specifically. And so uh, we'd want to take just, we would want to take a closer look at that. Sure. Thank you, David. Um, well, it looks like, I mean, I know we went over a lot of these questions. Um, are there any, Nick, that you see that we haven't um, gone over? I know we did answer quite a few of them that were on here. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of, kind of going through it. I do see a lot of um, feedback or, or suggestions about do potentially doing a future forum on uh, short-term rentals. That, yes, that's actually a fantastic idea. As I'm sure we all know, uh, our, our mountain towns, our ski towns, uh, housing is getting kind of ridiculous up there. I'm sure uh, folks have a lot of questions about, uh, or, you know, what, what are the, the restrictions or, or uh, can I rent out my unit, you know, how long or, or for not how long. Um, that might, yeah, we'll, we'll can definitely consider doing that. Uh, we also had some some people suggest uh, special districts. Um, so these are all great suggestions that we'll definitely take into account. Again, uh, yeah, if you had any other further questions, um, probably the, our, our preferred method of, of contact is the email inbox that um, we, we mentioned earlier in the slides. Um, actually, let me see if I can right there, Dora underscore Dre. Uh, but we, there's also a phone uh, a phone number on our website. Um, definitely feel free to to, to call us um, if uh, if we have the opportunity to uh, address your question. Um, I want to I want to jump in one real quick because I see some conversation uh, uh, regarding a question from Dina Nick, if that's okay, uh, and that has to do with it is par still parking. It's it's whether or not uh, uh, um, a camper van or a trailer or something to that extent, um, uh, if that can be parked at a house. Um, uh, just because you live on a public thoroughfare, a public right of way, doesn't mean that you can do whatever you want on your property. It just means that the association doesn't have the authority to enforce its parking rules on that right of way. Your driveway is not part of the of that uh, right of way. The side of your house where I see a lot of people park RVs and things like that, um, uh, that is not part of the, the, the right of way. So the association still does have a authority in those circumstances, uh, it, uh, just as much as I'm not allowed to park my my car on, on my front yard. Um, a lot of you have rules that say uh, you can may only be parked on your driveway, for instance. I can't park a, th a second car on my uh, off my driveway in the gravel on the side of my driveway. That would, if, if, if that's a rule that you have in your community, that uh, that is still an enforceable rule by the uh, for the community. Your board could issue a, a notice of violation in that circumstance. Um, uh, what, what would matter for or your trailer, your camper van, your RV, what have you, on a public thoroughfare is what does the law say in your local locality? If you live in a city, 
you can contact your municipality and talk to and, and ask them questions about your parking code because that's different in Parker th than it is in Keystone than it is in Denver. Um, uh, um, there are di there are different durations how uh, how long you can leave a car parked in a certain spot on a public thoroughfare um, before it gets ticketed or towed um, by by the by the city or the municipality or the or the county. So becoming familiar if you have these public rights of way in your community you should contact you should do some research you can look go to let's say we're talking about parker type in parker parking code enforcement uh, into uh, your your the google strain of uh, or search engine of your choice and uh, and and you'll probably get some hits and you'll be able to find the parking code for that area if you're unsure if you're un in unincorporated areas or incorporated areas then um uh, uh, you, you, uh, you you could probably contact the county and say this is my address am i in unincorporated adams county or am i in in Aurora proper, um, uh, if you don't know that, um, uh, there are methods where you can find that out. That's the first step you need to take in order to determine whose rules apply. Um, uh, um, uh, once you once you know if if it's a public right of way, you can check off. You know that the the board doesn't have authority, but 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 the question is, does the county or does the city have that authority? So you, you your next step would be to figure out if you're in a municipality or not. If you're in the municipality, that rule those their rules will apply. If you are in an unincorporated area, those rules would apply. If you are in a special district, as we talked about earlier, those rules could apply as well because that is a governmental entity. So um, so keeping that in mind, that's uh, uh, there's sort of a, a, a a process that you have to work through there in order to figure out what your rules are. Your rules might be no more than 32 uh, hours worth of, of, of consistent consecutive hours of parking. Others are 28 days. Um, uh, there are significant variations from municipality to municipality, county to county, etc. So becoming aware of that and, and generally speaking, you can find that out either through a, a quick phone call to uh, that, that that governmental entity, or uh, probably through some web research as well. So, uh, um, uh, so the, those are those are the resources that you, you're, you're going to need to take the next steps in order to figure out. Okay, if if I know that the board doesn't have the authority, what 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 are the rules then? What does apply here? Um, uh, so that so that you can make sure that you follow those rules, because you don't want to get ticketed or towed by the city. You don't want to get ticketed or towed by the county either. So. All right, policy. Um, Vicky, Vicky asked, uh, can can HOA documents restrict proxy to owners? The answer to that, I believe, is no. Uh, mm -hmm. In unit owner meetings, the the unit owners have will always have the ability to issue proxies. Uh, they can never restrict that ability. However, if it's a board meeting. The governing documents can restrict that, uh, and I believe the only type of proxy that a, that a director can, uh, excuse me, a director can use in a board uh, meeting is a directed proxy, which means they have to vote in a specific way. It cannot be a generally issued proxy. <clears throat> proxy, if that makes sense. I would agree with that, uh, um, but uh, but then to distinguish that a unit owner granting a proxy is very different than a board member issuing a proxy. So keep that in mind. If you, if if you're not on your board, you still have rights to issue a proxy and grant a proxy to someone else to act on your behalf. Um, uh, but uh, but but Nick is right that uh, that the um, uh, in 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 the vast majority of cases that the uh, a board issue a board member issue a proxy to another board member to vote on at, at, uh, uh, at, at the upcoming board meeting because they're going to be out of town on business, what have you, um, then that, that should be a directed proxy um, uh, in that circumstance. But, uh, but homeowners don't have that same uh, restriction uh, in place. They, uh, um, uh, and, and, but, but generally speaking, you want to consider as a, as a unit owner, who are you willing to grant a proxy to? If I'm just some stranger that you've never met before, you might not want to 
issue a, a, a proxy to me because you don't know how I'm going to vote. Now I'm going to. I, I'll tell. We regularly do tell people make your case to your neighbors, make them understand, help them understand what you your vision for the community is that you want this person out of off the board or you want this amendment to the declaration to pass and here are my reasons why here are my right reasons that i think that uh it uh, um uh it should not stay at the same as is or what have you whatever the circumstances and uh and so uh, make make your case to uh your neighbors so that they understand uh um uh, how you will vote because uh, because otherwise th th they'll they'll be far more inclined to probably grant that proxy to you if they agree with your vision if they think that you're you're going in a, uh, in a direction that they would like to see their community go as well. Um, uh, there's also some uh, a, 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 some exchange about uh, uh, whether how many how many proxies a person can hold. I could I could uh, um, go into a a, a, a a meeting with as many proxies as um, uh, as I'm able to collect. Um, uh, so, uh, but it is only. A, it's a proxy per unit or per household that is is what matters. I don't get to talk to husband and wife and and walk out with two proxies because they only have very likely one unit that they're voting that they have voting shares for. So it's not the number of people; it's the number of units or the number of households that is uh, is what matters. Um, uh, so not not the number of people because there there could be a situation where there are multiple generations of adults that live in a community in in one single household. Only the only the unit owners that are on the deed can uh, are, are have the right to actually vote or actually have the right to issue a proxy to someone, um, uh, and so and and that is an undivided interest. Um, uh, the vast majority of the communities in in Colorado, I can only think of a few exceptions that I've been have been brought to my attention. Um, it's usually something very akin to one unit, one vote. Um, doesn't matter if I own it with 10 other of my best friends. We went in uh, and bought a place uh, um, uh, jo as joint owners. Uh, back the, we have, you have to figure out how, how those, those 10 people are going to agree to issue a proxy to one person or how the, those 10 people are going to vote at the meeting if they didn't issue a proxy. It's not the number of people. Um, it's the number of units that uh, uh, apply. I, I would agree, John. With John, John's comment here is simply covenants usually specify one vote per property. That's at, uh, that's very much the case. And I've seen some condos. My the, the condo I used to live in, I had a quarter of a unit, uh, a, a quarter of a vote because I had a garage. Um, uh, so I had one point two five. Um, uh, um, uh, but uh, uh, an exception that I I I, I, I know about is a, a a community in southern Colorado who said, you know what. We we know that mostly um, uh, they're, they're, these are they're they're joint owners in these communities. Sometimes they might not want to vote the same way. So um, so that cov the covenants in that community, and it is odd. It's unique. Um, I'd say they said every community unit has two votes, and so mo uh, so in that situation, a lot of people uh, say, well. The, um, the the one spouse says I'm I'm voting this way, and the other vote the one uh, other spouse says no, I'm I'm voting the other way. That's okay. That's their prerogative. Um, but uh, but yeah, you it, it, very very usually we're going to see situations that it's one parcel, one vote in most cases. All right. Well, it is. Uh... <laughs> It's uh, about 15 minutes after two. Um, again, we just want to thank everyone for, for participating. And again, uh, my name is Nick Altman. Uh, I'm, I'm the new HOA information officer. Uh, I'm gonna do my best to, to help out everyone and answer questions as, as best I can. Um, certainly, I might not always know the answer right away, but uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'll always try my best to, to look into it for you and get back to you in a reasonable, a reasonable amount of time. Um, David or Amanda, did you have any um, <clears throat> final uh, concluding remarks here before we uh, before we get off? 
Just uh, um, I, I, that I, I hope I, I really want to thank everyone for uh, another really excellent discussion here today. Um, I'm really grateful for uh, all of your close attention, your wonderful, helpful questions. Um, uh, it, uh, there's always challenging ones here, and uh, and and that 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 challenge is something that I really I, I eat up. I really enjoy, and I know that Nick uh, does as well. So uh, um, so uh, there, there there certainly might be situations where there are some things that we don't necessarily know the answer to but we always want we we, we want to help find things out uh and help get you all on the right paths so thank you very much for your attendance today and i hope you have a great weekend as well okay um and and i guess in in closing uh um uh it uh the recording for this, as well as the slides uh, of, of Nick's presentation, will be available on our website uh, sometime next week. Um, I, it takes us some time to download and do a little bit of editing to the to it, um, and then upload it. Uh, but uh, but generally speaking, uh, by, I'd say by the middle of next week, um, at the at the link there, you will you will be have access to this recording. Uh, at present, you have every other uh, um, forum that has been presented over the last seven or so months um, uh, available at that at that link that we've provided in the chat here and in the slides as well. But uh, so yes, they're, they're there for you. And uh, I, I thank you all for attending and I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks to Amanda as well. Well, uh, we'll see you all later. Thank you very much.